everyone, my name is Kyle Andrew, and you're watching Kuya Kyle's Learning Adventures. Okay guys, if you are wondering what's behind me, it is the old Manila. And for today's video, we will talk about another Philippine national hero who was born in Pogda, Manila. He is known for his bravery, and when Filipinos hear letters KKK, his name always comes in mind. Who is this hero? Talking about Andres Bonifacio, the founder of Katipunan. To learn more about him, please watch this video. Let's go! Andres Bonifacio, a mini documentary. Andres Bonifacio E. de Castro was born on November 30, 1863 in Tondo, Manila. Growing up in the slums of Tondo, he witnessed poverty and class struggle from a very close quarter. However, contrary to popular belief, his family was not very poor. His father, Santiago Bonifacio, was a local politician who for a time served as the chief lieutenant of the municipal mayor. His mother, Catalina de Castro, was a Spanish mestiza. She worked as a supervisor in a cigarette factory. Born eldest of his parents' six children, Andres had five siblings. Named Procopio de Castro Bonifacio, Espera Jona Bonifacio Distrito, Trocaljo de Castro Bonifacio, Maxima de Castro Bonifacio, and Syriaco de Castro Bonifacio. Little is known about his childhood except that he learned the alphabet from his mother's sister. He eventually began his education at the private school possibly run by Guillermo Osmeña from Cebu. He studied there for seven years only. When Andres Bonifacio was still very young, his father contracted tuberculosis, which forced him to stop working. He died when Andres was barely 13 years old. A year later, his body also passed away from the same disease. After the death of his parents, Andres Bonifacio started making friends out of paper and cane, which he and his siblings sold to sustain themselves. In around 1877 to 1878, Andres dropped out of school in order to earn his living. Later, they began making posters for business houses. He looked at his family by working in various capacities, such as tailoring and operating ferry services across the Pasig River. When Bonifacio was in late teens, he started working as a messenger for a British trading firm called Fleming & Company. Later, he joined a German trading firm called Fresno & Company, working there as a storehouse keeper. It is not known when, but he also became an agent and broker of tar, threaten, and other goods. All along, he continued to enhance his knowledge by reading various books and becoming aware of the social injustice faced by his countrymen under the oppressive Spanish rule. He continued his studies in private, reading books and subjects like French Revolution and biographies of the U.S. presidents, etc., published in Spanish and Tagalog language. When he was in his late teens, he also picked up English and read internationally famous works like Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, Le Drift Aaron by Eugene Sue, and 
No Limit Tanghere and El Filibusterismo by Jose Rizal and many others. He also grew an interest in contemporary Philippine penal and civil codes. It is not known when or how Andres Bonifacio became involved in active politics. However, we know that by the early 1890s, he used to distribute revolutionary leaflets against Spanish oppression near the University of Santo Tomas. By 1892, he was fully involved in nationalist movements, becoming one of the co-founders of La Liga Filipina, established formally by Jose Rizal on 3rd of July. The organization, however, which called for the reform of the Spanish colonial government through peaceful means, did not sustain to fulfill its mission. Shortly after the group's first meeting was held, the Spanish authorities arrested as a result. On 7 of July 1892, it was announced that he would be deported to Dapitan in Mindanao. On the very night Rizal's reputation was announced, Bonifacio co-founded a secret organization called Katipuna with Ladislao Diwa, Shidoro Plata, and Diodato Arliano. Its full name was Kataas Taasan Kagalang Galanan Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan or KKK meaning highest and most respected society of the country's children. It sought to gain independence from Spain through armed revolution. Bordered on Masonic order, its members belong mostly to the educated middle class. In 1892, 29-year-old Bonifacio met 18-year-old Gregoria de Jesus through his friend and her cousin Chidoro Plata. Gregoria's parents disapproved first of their relationship since Andres was a Freemason, a person considered enemies of the Catholic Church back then. However, they gave in as soon as the couple got married through a Catholic ceremony in Binonda Church on March 1893 or 1894. Andres and Gregoria also got married through Katipunan rites in a friend's house in Santa Cruz, Manila on the same day of the church wedding. Initially, the Katipunan was an exclusively male society, though the membership was later extended to females with Bonifacio's wife Gregoria leading the group. Bonifacio first served as its controller and then as its fiscal. In 1895, he was elected Presidente Supremo of the society. Shortly, he started concentrating on increasing the group's membership. In March 1896, Katipunan also established its own paper called Kalayaan or Freedom, with Bonifacio contributing in it under the pseudonym of Agapito Bagumbayan. The paper led to a drastic increase in their membership, which grew from around 300 at the beginning of the year to 3,000 by July. On May 3, 1896, Bonifacio held a general meeting in Pasig where the leaders of Katipunan met to discuss the timing of the revolution. By then, a rebellious mood was sweeping across the nation and Bonifacio and his group believed that the time was right to launch their revolution. Others like Santiago Alvarez and Emilio Aguinaldo believed that they still lacked adequate firearms and therefore they should wait. By August 1896, the Spanish authorities became aware of the presence of a secret Sanchez society and realized that the country was on the verge of a revolution. On August 19, so as to be in the uprising, they arrested and imprisoned.
imprisoned hundreds of Filipinos, many of whom were not even involved in rebellious activities. In late August 1896, Andres Bonifacio organized a mass gathering in Caloocan. Here, they kick-started the revolution by tearing off their personal identity documents or cedulas, signaling their refusal to pay taxes under Spanish rule. The event was later known as the Cry of Balintawak or Cry of Pugad Lawin. Bonifacio then reorganized the Katipunan into an open de facto revolutionary government naming the nation as Haring Bayang Katagalugan or Tagalog Republic. On August 23, 1896, he declared independence from Spain, naming its president and commander-in-chief of the revolutionary government. He himself led an attack on San Juan del Monte with the intention of countering Manila's Metro Water Station and the powder magazines on August 30. In San Juan del Monte, the Spanish, who were fewer in number, were able to hold off until the reinforcement arrived. Ultimately, Bonifacio's troops suffered great casualties and he was forced to withdraw. Thereafter, he turned his attention to establishing mountain and hill base at Balara, Pantayanin, Ungong, and Tongko. On November 7, 1896, he led attacks on Marikina, Montalban, and San Mateo. Although he initially succeeded in driving away the Spaniards from these towns, he later lost these boats and decided to move to Cavite where troubles were brewing between two groups. The rebels in Cavite were divided into two factions, Magdalo headed by General Emilio Aguinaldo and Magdiwang headed by Andres Bonifacio relative Mariano Alvarez. When Bonifacio reached Cavite, Aguinaldo, who was militarily more successful and belonged to a wealthy family, started challenging him on various matters. They decided to meet in Tejeros on March 22, 1897 and hold an election in order to settle the issue of government within the Katipuna once and for all. The election was won by Emilio Aguinaldo who became the president of the new Philippine Republic. Bonifacio received the second highest number of votes by virtue of which he should have become the vice president. But he was appointed to the post of secretary to the interior which is relatively lower position. Since Bonifacio did not have any university degree, Daniel Tirona questioned his fitness for the job of secretary to the interior. Humiliated, Bonifacio pulled out his gun to shoot Tirona but was stopped. He later dissolved the assembly and declared the result null and void. By April 1897, Emilio Aguinaldo had consolidated his position with many of Bonifacio's supporters switching sides. Ceasing trouble, Bonifacio decided to get out of Cavite. While he was in Indang, Aguinaldo issued an arrest warrant for him, accusing him of fostering disunity and sedition. On April 25, 1897, while camping at Barrio Limbon, Indang, Bonifacio was surprised to see Aguinaldo's men led by Colonel Agapito Bonzon and Major Jose Ignacio Paua coming to visit them. Early on April 26, 1897, Bonzon and Paua opened fire on Bonifacio's men, although 
surprised Bonifacio told his men not to fight against their own people. But shots were nevertheless exchanged. Unfortunately, one of his brothers was killed. He was then taken to President Aguinaldo's headquarters in Nike along with other captives. At Nai, Andres Bonifacio and his brother Procopio were tried for treason and sedition against revolutionary government as well as for attempting to murder Aguinaldo. The jury was composed entirely of Aguinaldo's men, so was his defense lawyer, who acted more like the prosecutor instead of defending him, confirmed his guilt. Therefore, in spite of insufficient proof of his guilt, he and his brother were sentenced to death by a firing squad. On May 8, 1897, President Aguinaldo commuted the dead sentence to deportation to an isolated island nearby. But on being persuaded by his generals to withdraw the order, he ultimately signed the dead sentence. On May 10, 1897, the Bonifacio brothers were taken to Mount Nagpatong near Mount Buntis in Maragandon where they were shot dead by a firing squad. At that time, Andres Bonifacio was 34 years old. Did you know? Andres Bonifacio was once a theater actor. Prior to the founding of Katipunan, Andres Bonifacio was a part-time theater actor who appeared in several Moro Moro plays. He often played the role of Bernardo Carpio, a fictional character in Tagalog folklore. Pop Quiz Bonifacio formed a group dedicated to taking up arms against the Spaniards. What was the group's name? Five, four, three, two, one. Answer. It's Katipunan. Okay guys, that's the life story of Andres Bonifacio, the leader of Katipunan. I hope you learned and enjoy this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and for more videos, Please subscribe and click the bell icon. So see you in my next videos. Bye! Other new videos coming soon.